up in the high country. I've been here a few times before, and even up this end of the Wanangatta. But the thing about the high country is it's always different. And I've got Steve with me from GIC Trailers. He's got the Hilux and the Ranger. And it's going to be a bit different this time because we're going to be guided by an old mate of mine. He's been coming up here since, oh, since the baby Jesus wore sandals, probably. This is going to be an awesome trip. It really is. I can't wait. This is the turn here, Steve. We'll be meeting him in here. Alright, mate, I'm following. Wonderful. Looking forward to this. Straight into the high country with sun shining. Oh, doesn't this look good, Steve? Exceptionally green, isn't it? That's what I love about it. Yeah, you know what that means. There'll be lots of mud up the high country. And looking forward to it, John. <laughs> Lock of speed, watch out. I don't know where he is. He'll be down here somewhere. Yep, it's my old mate Alan Gray from Terrain Tamer. And he's already got the bonnet up. <laughs> Al's bought along the old shorty from Terrain Tamer. Now, the guy's built probably one of the toughest shorties in the country. How are you? Oh, not too bad, thanks. Not Good too to bad. See you, Alan. Welcome to Excellent. the best caravan park in the place. Eh? It is, mate, isn't yeah. it? By yeah. a long way. Here we got here. Steve from oh, GIC. Hi, hi Steve. You, you brought him somewhere from here to sleep, I see. That is yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's got the billiards table. Very, very thoughtful of him. <laughs> they tell me I'm going to take you guys for a bit of a trip up in the high country. You're the tour guide. You're the <laughs> tour guide. Alan Gray, tour no, guide extraordinaire. Don't blame me if you get bogged or something. Listen, I've got a GPS. <laughs> I've got a box of pigeons. No, don't tell me. <laughs> I've got enough food for about a month. I've got a packet of seeds in case you get stuck. Oh, well, <laughs> what okay. I'd like to do is have a bit of a look at your vehicle because I don't this to be running nice and yours falling a bits down the track. Mate, mine's running perfectly, <laughs> as always. It's, it's, not, it's not like yours. No. <laughs> I'm going to have a bit of a look under it if you don't mind. Well, I had a bit of a dodge on the way down, Alan. Because last time I was running over your spare wheels. No, no, I mean, I don't even need to check this thing, Alan. Hey, look, you missed it. You missed the big point. I don't know why you bother under there. You know I keep this thing in pristine condition, Alan. I've got everything's new under there, Alan. Well, I was thinking, you know... Um... Don't think too hard, Alan. Okay, now am I going to resurrect the split pin or have you got some uh, magic tennis split pins? Oh boy, Alan's an absolute perfectionist. He can't resist giving Milo the Alan Gray once-over, which is basically like everybody else's 12-over, if you know what I mean. I must admit, I always kind of like it when he looks at my truck. He spots things that nobody else sees. Yeah. Oh, watch out, now he's onto Steve's rig. <laughs> I reckon Alan's pretty impressed by the GIC trailer, as much as anything because he thinks he's going to be sleeping in it. Oh boy, are you in for a surprise. So you happy now? Oh, reasonably happy. Uh, oh. Yeah, tighten a few nuts and bolts. I think we'll probably get uh, at least 50 k's up the road with our oh, polar reds. Geez, All right, fussy, Alan. let's load this stuff up and let's get going. All right, okay. mate. Right I'm right glad on. I didn't bring my wheelbarrow along. You'd find something wrong with that too. <laughs> That's rock and roll. You want to lead the way, Alan? Yeah, well, I figure you probably know your way out of the caravan park anyway, eh? <laughs> now our plan for this trip is to travel east from historic Wanangatta to the Blue Rag Trig Point. This lookout is 1,718 metres above sea level and Alan reckons it's the best 360 degree view in the high country. To make this trip, we're going to drive 20 k's or so of some of the toughest tracks in the Alpine region. Our first port of call is to tackle a secret track out of Wanangatta that'll take us up to the Basalt Knob track around Selwyn. If we make it through, then we'll traverse the Blue Rag Range where we'll hopefully reach our final destination. Oh boy, all this in one weekend. This is some of the hardest, rockiest and most rutted out driving in the country. Now I know Milo's going to make it, I just wonder if Alan will. While in Wanangatta, I met up with Richie, a long-time reader and a fair dinkum four-wheel driver. Now, Richie knows this area like the back of his hand. He's just the bloke to tell us about some of the local secrets. And he knows a track that's supposed to be one of the toughest in the region. This will take us on the first leg of our journey, west towards Selwyn. That's if we make it that far. True to his word, Rich is waiting for us just a few minutes out of Wanangatta. Hey, Richie. Ruthie. <laughs> what are you doing here, mate? 
Oh, I'm just cruising fast. Keep it well. Yeah, good on you. Do you know Alan? No, I don't. Alan? Yeah, you do. Really. And Steve? Pleasure, mate. Good to meet you, mate. Yeah, likewise. Boy, am I glad we ran into you, mate. We've been up and down all over the place. Yeah. Found some good tracks, but what we want something pretty hard, you know? Yeah, this little one just around the corner down here. Might tickle your fancy, I think. Yeah, good. Bit of a local favourite, yeah. A local favourite? Yeah. Locals here tend to be pretty serious about this stuff too. I mean, look at that rig. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, if what do you reckon? Two k's turn left? Oh, yeah, I reckon uh, yeah, a couple of k's down the road there. Uh, big yellow sign. I'll give you a yell when you've got to come and rescue us, all right? Five minutes down the Dargo Road and we've reached the turn off to the track. I'd like to tell you where it is, but I'm afraid I can't because it's a bit of a local secret and you know how they are. You could go and find it yourself, though. Right? Where are you taking us? Where is he? Oh, this is uh, that track Richie was talking about. Oh, you're going to get us lost the way we're going. Oh, no, mate. No, you've got to trust the old bushy. I know uh, where I'm going. I think, I think you're doing better than that, buddy. You've let me down before. No worries, mate. Ha! Ah, little does Alan know. I know exactly where we're going, thanks to the VMS's memory map. And it'll lay a path and I can follow it, and then I can follow it all the way back. And you know what? I can even flick it over the street, mate find my way back to Brisbane the quickest way. Ha! <laughs> I don't know. Alan thinks it's bushcraft. It's more like witchcraft. But it works. When it comes to deep, wet, muddy grass, there's not much you can do except nail it and point it in the right direction. Traction isn't really what it's about here. Here we are, 10 minutes down the track and Alan's already reaching for the chainsaw. I was quite surprised when he pulled the rope. I thought he'd just sort of sit there and try sawing with it for a while. You know, like they used to do back in the convict settlement when he was a lad. Pretty soon we're through the trees and off again. This track is definitely a secret because not many people have been here for a while. Erosion's taken over and we've got some really tough gaps to get over. Milo doesn't do too bad at it. The shorty you'd expect to do well. Milo's got that good old soft thing happening, so she just rocks on up there, you know, bit of locker here and there. The biggest problem we've got, I think, is Steve, because Steve's got the trailer on behind, and this is going to be interesting. The other guys are going to... They've stopped halfway up, but I don't actually want to be able to stop halfway up. I just want to clear under the top, because obviously they're not towing trailers. So they're going to go the rest of the way and I'm going to try and do this in one long hit. It's going to be one wild ride. Hang on a minute, Alan. Hang on. He's in a bad spot there. It's a long way from going over. It's, it's only 30 degrees. <laughs> At least a 32. Come back. That's it. Going down. Left hand down still. You gotta give it to Alan. I don't know where he learned his driving style. Probably at a Dodgem circus somewhere, I'd say. When in doubt, spin it out. <laughs> Come on, Al. That's all right. That's all right now, isn't it? I'll just go forward, won't I? Tipping a vehicle over is a high country thing. You always have to watch out for it. The combination of great big ruts and severe angles, wow. You know, that's when things can really go nasty. It's looking better now, isn't it? Yeah, you get there. Oh, looking better? You gotta be kidding! Can somebody sit on the front mud guard? No, on the on the running board here. So I can turf you off. Can I go back further? Uh, 
Well, Al, if that was perfect, I'm handsome and skinny. Sorry to pull up in that. Are you going to let me get off, are you? Well. Oh, good on you. Yeah, that was the trouble. It was too heavy on the top side there. Too heavy on the top side? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, you've got guts, haven't you? <laughs> you scared that. the crap out of me. You've got guts. <laughs> you know the thing I like? Alan's sitting in there, one degree off falling over, going, she's right, we'll have another go. You're mad. You're madder than me. You're crazy old bastards. <laughs> You're allowed 40 degrees, eh? Was it 30 degrees? Milo's a bit longer, a little bit more top heavy, and possibly the better vehicle on this hill because I've got lockers. But you wouldn't know it, would you? Wow, it's a battle to find traction. I don't know how Steve's going to go here. This is not easy. Alan's one of the guys who built that motor in Milo, and you know what? Blueprinted, balanced, it's the best little diesel anywhere. It'll run upside down, which could be really handy on this hill. Hey, Ruthie, there's a log up your backside, mate. Better shift it. I thought that was going to be easy. It is easy. What are you talking about? Some bloke came along, dug it all up on me. Now, look, all you got to do is go backwards a bit and you're in front. No, I've got a stump right behind me. Can you have a quick look? Tell me what you reckon. Yeah, uh, you got a box of matches. I'll set it on fire. Oh, I did. I've got all day. Just stay there for a minute. I suppose he has me chance I could run him over. <laughs> Workplace health and safety? Alan's got no idea whatsoever. Well, he has. He's just... He's got to be about the gutsiest bloke I know. I suppose you get that when you're 197 and, you know, not frightened of anything. Straight. You know what berries are? Give it the berries. No, oh, well, Al, you built the motor. I'll give it the berries. No worries. Kids, don't do this at home, all right? <laughs> Not until you're this age, okay? Then it's too late. <laughs> then it's too late. <laughs> oh, wow. Alan and I have had a bit of a technical time on this track. I don't know if you heard us. I could hear it, the car engines. Out from down here. Basically, uh, Alan totally destroyed the track and I've done my bit to rebuild it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we figure that your technique to bung the lockers on and go the berries, but no one needs to tell you that, do they? No, mate, I was planning on doing that. Okay, now there's one other thing we want you to know, and that is that um, when you take this little turn, there's one big rut on the left and then a sort of a, a lesser rut in the middle. Yeah, I remember it, yep. Well, the trick is to basically, and, and this is what worked for us, to aim straight up that hill. You'll see where we've worn it out with our tyres. Give it heaps to get up there, and then the front of the vehicle will slip over to the left and you'll wind up with your wheels in the lesser of the ruts, the one that's in the middle. Tell you what, it's a good thing the old GIC is a strong package because uh, Steve's given it the berries. That trailer's getting a hammering. Did well though, pulled right through, no damage at all. Beautiful. Now mate, I actually wanted you a bit further over there, but yeah. I don't think it matters. See where our tracks go here? Yeah. If you go just a little bit to the right here, aim straight at Alan, yeah, where he's saying, and the, and the car will pull down that way and the wheels should drop into that rut. We've put some logs in there for you. You'll have traction because you've got your uh, lockers on. When you bury it up there, hang to the right. Steve aims it straight at Alan. I kind of asked him to do that. I don't mind at all. Um, just remember to stop if you run over him, Steve. Nope, I'm not going anywhere here. And it's not the Hilux's problem either. You saw how hard it was for the shorty and for Milo to get up there. Well, the problem here is 
that extra weight of the trailer's just going to hold everything up. Plus, of course, we've gone and dug up the track. Especially Alan. Oh, it's true. I don't even know you can get a licence at 267 years old. The GIC is well and truly stuck here. It's a good thing it's a tough trailer, because, I'll tell you what, a lot of lesser trailers would be staying behind about now. I'm thinking I'll bring Milo down just a bit. We run over to that tree with a pulley and a, a shackle, and we just give Steve a bit of an inch out of this hole. Because I think that's going to pull out without doing any damage, Steve, because it's pretty soft. Yeah, so we'll Heavy! Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Steve's well and truly stuck, and really, our biggest issue here is how to move him and the trailer without doing too much damage to anything else. Now, if we pull him out on a little bit of an angle by doubling up the winch, we've got a chance. It's just going to rely on a whole lot of uh, quick thinking. Hey, Alan, you're out of this, mate. Go and stand over under that tree, please. go with 12 tonnes on a single pull and that's as far as we can go. We've moved it about three feet and that's not too bad. We're getting to where we could be. We've popped a tyre on the Hilux, the front left. That makes life a little bit tougher and because of that we're now going to double this winch up again and try a straight pull up the hill. Worst thing that can happen at this stage is that the winch burns out so we're trying to save the winch. The Hilux is probably going to drop into that ditch We'll deal with that as we deal with it. Steve's well and truly stuck, and really, our biggest issue here is how to move him and the trailer without doing too much damage to anything else. I can smell the winch. Oh, it's going to go sideways all the way up the hill. I think so. Which is not such a bad thing as long as we can do that. Good, good. Give it a, give it a. Good a? What? Come on, Al. Smell something. They talked like that 350 years ago, did they? This is actually suspended in the air at the moment. Steve-O, uh, even doubled up, the winching isn't working, mate. We're going to have to disconnect the trailer. Uh, maybe a bit. You on channel better than mate? <laughs> yeah, who's that? Twitchy, mate, I can hear you talking around the top here. Are you having trouble, are you? Oh, mate, we're having big time trouble. Um, we're on a real a section here with a couple of real deep ruts. Well, one real deep rut, one not so deep rut, and, a, and an off camber, sort of shooting down to that river. We're coming up it. Do you know that bit at all? Oh, I think I've got a fair idea where you are there, mate. Yeah, we're not too far away. A couple of minutes, I think. Woody, what, you got the cavalry with you? Got me, mate. Uh, B-Rad here, yeah. <laughs> B-Rad? <laughs> mate, look, honestly, you couldn't have come at a better time. Fair dinkum. We need all the help we can get. As soon as you get here... It's on. Good on you, mate. Ah, oh, thank heavens. Here's Richie, and he's brought along here? his mate Brad to hey, give us a hand. Richie! You haven't got a cart and a cold beer with you, have you, mate? <laughs> oh, Rich. How are you, mate? <laughs> what have you done to yourself, Abel? Oh, I said old Alan Gray. He did it all. He stuffed everything up. Uh, we got into some strife here. Um, yeah, well, you can see what's going on. Our next plan, which is the best one we've got, feel free to modify it. We're going to chalk up the trailer. Get Steve to roll backwards a bit and just get the Luxie out of here. He's got a blown front left hand tyre. And, well, you know what this is like. You know this track. You made it. She's a beauty. It's a beauty, isn't it? Now you're going to tell me there's an easier way to go, aren't you? Oh, you, you just had to driven it right in the first place. And yeah, yeah, well, no, I might avoid no. the situation. Well, I'm up here, mate. It's these guys. <laughs> come on, come and give us a hand. The trailer at the moment is that stuck it's not funny, but really, without the trailer, Steve's got a fair chance of bouncing the Hilux to the top, even with that stuffed tyre. I'll pull you out of the hole first, and then we won't waste your tyre and clutch and everything. OK? Steve, are you ready to go? Steve, you can drive! 
Steve was well and truly stuck there, but after a little bit of jigging around, we managed to get him up. And then Richie got the 60 in, dragged him backwards into a bit of a flat spot. Now we've got a chance to try and check that tyre. Whenever you can, it always pays to get a flat tyre onto the flat if you're going to uh, give it a bit of a change. There's nothing quite like jacking vehicles up on extreme slopes when it comes to fun and games. That's when things actually get really dangerous too. We're not into danger around here. Well, apart from when we take Alan on trips, that is. If we let out the winch cable and you hook it around something on the, that side of the trailer so we can pull the trailer across and then and then pull it from there, do you know what I mean? I know what you mean, but I was just going to try and do it manually if see if it works. I'll knock the chalk out first, just give us a bit of slack. Once we've got the Hilux clear, we've got to pull the trailer out. That isn't that hard at all. It's not long before we've got the trailer reasonably free, and we're working on a few different angles to try and keep it that way. What fun, hey? If you want a trailer that can go anywhere in the world, absolutely anywhere, beat it up as much as you want, GIC Extreme Ranger toughest trailer in the world. Well Steve, after that I reckon you can say that mate, because by crikey we've put this trailer through some tough times. There's nothing like the feeling of making it to the top, you know, the boys all working together, this is what four wheel driving's all about. We've made it to the beginning of the basalt knob and we'll give that a bit of a go in the morning. If we make that, we can have a run at making it to the top of Blue Rag. Hey, what's going on? Oh, I've done this half. Oh. Not the half, just the, the freewheeler. The free I won't do it for you, but I might sit here and make sure you do it properly, eh? Hey? Yeah, all right then. Oh, gee, they're, they're tight. Just need something to give them a hammer. When I nod my head, you hit it. That, not me head. Oh, right, right. There you are, there's a bit. There's, there's a bit. That's our first piece to shear off. This piece of stuff there. Did you get the screws off the front seat? Yeah. There's a dozen of them. That's one of my older springs, that one. Had it for a while. You're right about that. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Next time you see an Ask Alan, remember that before Alan does it, he asks John. <laughs> oh, hello, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, don't cover that one up with a rag. Come on. Which this That's one? Another molly bit. Oh. Look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alan. Oh, yeah, okay. Next time I need some help, I'll ask Alan. <laughs> for sure. So, how much do I owe you for the help and the assistance in oh, the job? Yeah, there? You can buy me a, a, a lemon squash tonight. Buy your lemon squash? <laughs> I can't. Get it all into gear and let's go. I refuse to pack up while you're watching because you're going to find <laughs> tools that I've had for years that suddenly become yours. Our plan for today is to try and climb the blue rag tier. Alan reckons it's got the best view in the high country, and that's really saying something. First up, we're taking the dreaded basalt knob track. This one, from all reports, is one of the toughest tracks in the high country. From there, we'll reach that alpine country around Hotham and have a go at climbing the Blue Rag track too. Now, that's got some mighty steep drop-offs, but the scenery, wow. It's a must for any four-wheel driver. We've got a problem up here, honey. Just a tree across the road. Not a big tree, but... Uh, Land Cruiser size one. Hello, oh, mate. I'll pull back. What's your plan? Well, if we're not going to have lunch, we're going to get rid of the tree, eh? Come oh, on, Maestro. Let's get some ideas. Oh, listen, this is a one man operation. You want to sit over there and have a Bex and that, and I'll shift it for you? No worries, mate. That'd be great. No. I've got a better idea. <laughs> Seeing gotta... as I've got the talky little diesel with clutch, oh, yeah. how about we find your sneak chain? Have you got a sneak chain? Yeah, I've got a sneak chain. And do a double wrap and... The high country's all about trees, so there's always a chance yeah, there'll be one yeah. across the track. You need to be carrying some recovery gear, and a chainsaw's very handy too. But they're not all the same. Every tree recovery is a little bit different. 
Now, this is one of those things that you want to do fairly slowly. You want to think about it, do it fairly slowly. Because this tree is long over there, and it's long up there too. And sometimes even dead wood can be a lot stronger than you think. And so, all sorts of possibilities here. This might get caught at this end, that'll flick that end around into the side of Alan's truck. It might get caught at that end and pull something else, bang, over into Alan's truck. Or it might wipe out half a dozen people standing around with cameras filming it. So you've just got to be a little bit careful, do it nice and slow, and watch what's happening. How are you going, Alan? I'm going perfect. Well, I know you are. What about your truck? Never better. Of course, Alan's really good with logs. I mean, he spent 10 years chained to one down in Port Arthur. It's not too far over to Basalt Knob from here, and boy, already I'm starting to think about it. This is a very precarious track. It's rocky, it's steep, it's rutted out, and the locals laughed at us when we said we'd be taking a trailer up there. When it comes to sticking trailers into precarious situations, hey, Steve Robson's your man, he's not frightened of anything. And when I asked him, Steve, you know, mate, you want to take it a bit easy or something? No, nope, no way. He just looked at me and said, this GIC will go anywhere. All I have to do is get it there. Well, it's mostly the Hilux that's doing it. By oh, crikey, Steve gives it the berries like you wouldn't believe. They are one tough truck. Momentum failure. Five metres from the, the easy part of the track, and I failed. So I rolled back a good 40 metres on a hill like this with a trailer on. Wasn't any easy task. And now I'm stuck here. I don't know, Alan. I always reckon if you can't walk it, you shouldn't drive it. She's just about close to not walking. How you doing there, mate? Hanging in there. That's good, because the worst bit's yet to come. How much air you got in these tyres? Uh, about 25, I think. Ooh. 18. Well, I'm tempted to drop them to 18. 16 at the front and 18 at the back. Yep, 16 and 18 would suit me. Well, mate, you're doing some pretty amazing things here. I mean, you know, in theory we should winch. How was your clutch holding out? Oh, clutch is fine. Now, who's going to run all the way back up to Milo and get the deflator? I don't know how much a clutch will hold out with winching. Yeah, well, I'd rather deflate the tyres and have a go at that first. But starting at this angle? I think what we might do is uh, just do a, a double winch here. We'll just run it through the pulley block and back so that you don't actually have to drive. We'll just skull drag it up on the winch. All right. You'll have to keep the engine running to keep the winch powered. Yeah. And we're going to give this old winch a bit of a workout. But... Um, that's probably the best option, bar letting the air out and having to go, but if you're, you're just sitting still and spinning here, I presume. Yeah, I kind of bounced, see my tyres are up there. We might just peg him to that tree, yeah. that first tree. This is going to be uh, fun. They say this isn't even the worst bit, there's worse to come. But I made a mistake by rolling back, otherwise I was just about at the top of this section. Lesson learned, I'll stay there next time. Steve's staying fairly cool about all this, but right at the moment, he's sitting in one of the hottest seats in four-wheel driving. Perched like that with a trailer on the back, it wouldn't take much to go wrong here, and we're in all sorts of trouble. You went over the top of this or what? We'll take this as far as we can.
You know a hill's steep when it knocks you about just climbing up and down it a few times, I can tell you. Steve-O's doing everything in the Hilux's power to wiggle his way up that hill. And at the end of the day, wow, he's done it. Go, Steve-O, go, go, Steve-O, go! Well, finally Steve's made it. That was an awesome bit of driving. As much as anything, it was all about staying calm under the pressure of slipping over the side of that cliff. You are joking. I think steve has picked up a bit of gold on the way up, though. He certainly dug deep enough into the quartz. Once we've conquered the basalt knob track, things start to get a little easier, and it's not long before we start climbing the Blue Rag. This is a pretty interesting place. Look at the way the vegetation changes constantly. I guess it's because of the cold. I'm going to be finding the jumper in a minute. It's just dropped about... Actually, I can tell you, it's just dropped eight degrees. 1,500 metres. My altimeter says at the moment, so we've climbed a long way, very quickly, haven't we? Come after this blue rag. Gee, it's weird looking, weird looking country though. It's almost like a snap frost kill them all off, but you know, you've got all the, the regrowth coming through everywhere too. It's really weird. Have a mud puddle. Like we, you know, we're on the corner of peak around. And we're just going to wrap up in cotton wool. Yeah, it's a shame. I was looking forward to the view up here. Mount Blue Rag's quite an amazing drive. All you Victorian guys, you'd know it really well. The rest of Australia, come and have a look at it. It actually scales the back of the ridge. So as you're running along the ridge, you've got drops to both sides. Along the crest, it really is quite awesome. Lots of slippery rocks and things like that. And you know, either way, you could slide thousands of feet to the valleys below. It's possibly the best ridge top drive in all of Victoria. Alan reckons that 1,718 metre trig point at the top gives you the best panoramic view of the whole country. And not only that, we'll be able to see everywhere we've just been, plus Hotham and Feathertop and the Bogong complex. This is going to be good. As soon as the fog lifts, anyway. So much for the 360 degree views Alan was talking about. Oh, yeah, I suppose it was all right when you came up here with Human Hovel, was it, mate? You know, anywhere else they call it freezing, but in Victoria they call it summer. Um, we're on top of Blue Rag and it's about minus 480 degrees, I reckon. I feel like I've stepped out of liquid nitrogen. What I really like though about this, the highest spot you can drive to in Victoria in the ranges, is the wonderful 360 degree view, which happens to be all the same. <laughs> Look at it. I've been up here before, Blue Rag really is the most magnificent, spectacular place you can take a drive to. Not always when it's like this, obviously. On a nice sunny day, it's just absolutely brilliant. Um, and the drive, the last bit of the drive especially, is pretty exciting, you know, especially knowing that there's nothing on each side. In our case, we couldn't actually see it, but we know there's nothing there. Righto, Alan, now the important thing is, how far is it to Queensland, mate? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'll shout you a nice warm drink out of my esky. Come on, Steve.
Ah, oh, yes. If you want to see what the view's like from the top on a good day, then check out these shots from Matt, our photographer, who made the climb a week later just for you. That's typical high country for you. You never know what you're going to get. A bit like Alan, really. See you out there on the track, eh? Warren Gatter to Blue Rag is suitable for four-wheel drives only, and it'll probably take you the best part of a couple of days. The tracks are closed after the Queen's birthday long weekend, so your best bet is travelling in the summer months. Anyway, it's too cold to be in Victoria in winter. Call the Dargo Parks office on 03 5140 1243 for track conditions before you go. We're moving down to the river and into the river we'll drive. Whoa. That's a real bad impersonation of Bruce Springsteen. Oh, I give a lift. <laughs> well, we should have picked him up. Can you call Jack? Jack! Chill out! How is the new terrain tamer vest, John? It's the lance they gave me to ride into battle and I'm really keen on. Well, I'll leave this here because Milo's probably the one truck we won't have to winch. Uh, yeah. Welcome to cooking with Vlad. <laughs> Where do you get this from? Where do you get this from? <laughs> The high country never, ever fails to disappoint. Hang on, is that two negatives? What do you think of that glorious view, Maddie? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I love it how you can see so far. Hey, look at it, endless. Can I say freezing your nuts off? Probably not. No. <laughs> okay, tap dance. That was John's idea. John's, John's idea. John's idea. Australia really is the greatest place on earth. And I reckon the outback is the heart and soul of our country. There's nothing I love better than getting in Milo and driving off into the fast peace and quiet that you only get when you're right out in the bush. And the best thing is, it's just down the end of your street too. So come on. This is where you'll feel the true heartbeat of Australia. Come out here and have a look. <laughs>